Hey everyone, this is Sky, and I just wanted to come on today and speak a little bit about this transit of Mars and Sagittarius that we're having for about a month and a half here, kicking off 2018. Um, I don't usually talk about the transits of Mars that much, um, and I haven't really um, prioritized it so much, but I felt that it was really important. I had... Um, sort of a dream and vision about Mars's activity and what Mars is giving to us and I woke up today and I felt that I should make this video. Um, it hadn't quite clicked for me but I did realize that Mars is kind of um, following in Saturn's footsteps right now. Of course it moves much more quickly than Saturn so it doesn't take it too long to catch up but we just had Saturn in Sagittarius who is now in Capricorn now and um, feeling much better about itself there. Um, but we have Mars sort of retracing the steps that Saturn um, made in Sagittarius and I feel that this is um, a big deal for everyone especially for those of you who do have like strong Sagittarius or Gemini or even like Virgo or Pisces placements um, I feel that it gives a chance of sorts and it gives like a cathartic release um, because there is sort of a pattern that Saturn and Mars have together. They're the two malefic uh, planets in our solar system. Um, we have our benefics, which are Venus and Jupiter, and then we have our malefics, which are Saturn and Mars, which automatically sort of gives them an undertone of like um, something that feels a little bit evil or difficult or bloody, as Mars does rule Aries and Scorpio traditionally. So um, very uh, intense, uh, very passionate, ambitious signs um, who can be very powerful and also very um, jolting and um, calculating. So there was also a similar pattern of this happening when Saturn was in Scorpio as well. After um, Saturn had finished up in Scorpio, Mars then followed it and did a retrograde cycle through Scorpio. And um, that was very like defining for me as a person. So I, that's another reason that I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about this energy today and about some of the things that I learned from that time, because I feel that people... Um, everyone to some extent, but especially like Sagittarian or uh, mutable influenced people will be having this experience very strongly. Um, as I've realized that there's something from the period of time where Saturn was actively in Sagittarius that everyone kind of needs to give themselves. Um, so we had Saturn in Sag throughout, uh, well, since like 2016, even part of like 2015, because it like retrograded in and out, but I m more so count the time once it gets directly into a sign. So from like 2016, all the way through 2017, um, almost at the end of 2017, it changed into Capricorn. So really seek in your timeline, um, what didn't go well in 2016 and 17? What was difficult? What was the pain because I just know that it's really been trending through social media like 2017 being like the hardest year for everyone um, and I think especially mutable people who have like that Sag, Virgo, Pisces or um, Gemini energy and um, with Mars following through which deals more with direct action, direct conclusion, um, quick fix, active energy, it feels like there's something from that period of time that does need to be fixed. Um, most of us have moved on, most of us has, have gained some kind of closure, most of us have had um, new people to enter in or have grown closer to ourselves where we are strong enough and stable enough to close the door on that period of time. In which case, I think that the most important thing of this video that I'm kind of uh, wanting everyone to take away from this period of time, again, from like a January uh, 26th all the way up to um, March 17th, while we have this transit of Mars. By the way, all of the, the specific details are in the description box below about um, the more minute details of this. Something that I want everyone to take away is that um, you have to give yourself something now during this period of time that you couldn't give yourself in like 2016 and 2017. It's almost like there has to be an exhale or there has to be a, there has to be an easiness. There has to be a, an acceptance to come through really strongly right here and now in January and February. Um, in the first half of March. It's interesting that, again, uh, Mars will be changing sign right before the equinox on March 21st. So wrapping up this entire 2017 cycle from March to March of 2017 and 18, we also have Mars coming through and placing itself in the same place that Saturn was in. So it's like resolution is what comes to mind and resolving within yourself what couldn't step up to the plate during 2017 finally allowing yourself to be productive, finally allowing yourself to culminate and allowing yourself 
to sort of step into the place of the spiritual warrior and do what you couldn't do then. It can be very subtle things. For example, I'm seeing like a lot of people finally being able to um, do what they signed up for. That's a big thing with Mars moving through Sagittarius because I feel that with Saturn in Sagittarius, again, that was such a um, antithetical type of transit where Saturn was in Jupiter's sign. Again, Jupiter and Saturn are adversarial type of energies, very opposite energies. So when Saturn was in Ju when Saturn was in Jupiter's sign, it automatically created kind of a um, dislike or a disdain for itself and where it was. So I feel that we all had that too. Like we had sort of a dislike and a disdain for our positioning or our place in life throughout 2017, and that's changed. Like Saturn's now in Capricorn, which is its favorite place to be. It's back home. It finally got there, and which deals with um, being proud of where you are, being productive, being well placed, being structured, being stable. Um, but a lot of us don't quite feel that yet. And why is that? That's because Mars is where Saturn just was, um, recreating another injection of malefic energy into the Sagittarius archetype. Although Mars likes much more to be in Sagittarius. Again, it rules Aries. Um, so it's another fire sign. Like a Mars in Sagittarius can be a bit of a loose cannon energy, though. It can be very much um, attuned towards instant gratification. Um, it can burn out very easily. So there could be something from 2017 or through the cycle of Saturn and Sag that you thought would come to you now, but it feels that you have to keep building for it. And there can be like this desire to like collapse underneath the pressure of it because the gratification of that period of time hasn't come yet. But through giving yourself what you couldn't give yourself in 2017, the gratification that you experience from that motivates and compels this sort of catalytic uh, transformation within you that allows you to finally be able to climb and reach for what it is that you need. So embrace this period of time with Mars and Sagittarius to um, take yourself from the inside out is what I want to say, because of course we had Mars and Scorpio before Mars and Sagittarius. So um, that sort of creates this uh, poison this poison like mars likes to be in scorpio but it's not the most stable type of energy even though it's an it's a um traditional natural naturally placed energy because again it's a natural ruler of scorpio um but there's like a lot of poisons that can be introduced to us when mars is in scorpio and then sag comes to then purge and cleanse that out quite a bit and like um to blow out of the uh, rubble that mars and scorpio brings in so to get into the meat and potatoes of what this transit gives and compels us towards is what do we want to accomplish where do we see ourselves going from here it's not always the best time with this energy to do it spontaneously because again like over impulsiveness or too much spontaneity doing this energy can cause a burnout but it's important to not kind of be too meek or to be too enveloped by your surroundings as if you have no power over them because the blessing of this energy is it gives like the idea it gives the um philosophy again sagittarius like higher ideals um for example you can like um know what degree path you want to pursue what career that's like higher mind that you want to do like new academic things but beneath that is just the ability to logically and almost philosophically know what's next because again that's what Sagittarius is about too it's like it's kind of like what's next it's almost like a future operating sign and um the downside is that it's hard to sometimes face your present but to be more specific it's like what's wrong with your body what's wrong with your house what's wrong with your surroundings Mars and Scorpio find what's wrong with everything um next how do we solve this problem with my body? How do we solve this problem with my house? Where do I want to live? Um, how much money does it take for me to live there? How can I make that in an easier way? Um, Mars and Sagittarius. And through all of that, how can I give myself what I deprived myself of during my 2017 experience of Saturn in Sagittarius? Because, and another reason that I felt I needed to make this video, before too long, you know, 10 months or so, Jupiter will also follow up into Sagittarius. So that will have just been a lot of Sag activation. You know, we'll have had Saturn and Mars and soon to be Jupiter um, in November, I believe it is, of 2018 to come through. So all of us need to um, be developing a new type of appreciation of Sagittarius, a new type of comfort with Sag. Um, 
and it's usually a sign that a lot of people like. I, I of course, I've seen both sides of the spectrum, but um, Sagittarius seems to be more liked than disliked. But there's kind of even if you like can look within and be like, oh, I just love Sages. They're fun to be around. Everybody kind of doesn't like Sag that much because no one really sees the bad side of Sag. And if you have, then you're like, oh, I'm not watching this video. <laughs> Dislike? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but everyone sort of can sometimes feel like Sag is a bit pompous or a bit um, overexerted or too spontaneous, but at the same time, they kind of all want to be in Sagittarius's place. So we all need to almost like um, thrive more through the Sagittarius energy um, because aside from being able to identify the problems and being able to um, like intellectually, logically work your way out of them, which is the beauty of this transit, you can also learn how to thrive. Um, so basically, you've identified that you don't like where you're living, and then you think, okay, well, I want to live here. Um, what this transit can give you is the ability to make the next place thrivable, to where you don't, like, escape from where you are right now just to go back into the same situation with different surroundings, you know what I mean? It's about changing the backdrop. It's about catalyzing such a... Um, development i want to say of purpose here's here's the real thing it's a development of purpose time that's that's what this um transit is like that's what i've just channeled through purpose must be developed during this slot of time with mars and sag because you know i'm always thinking into the future a little bit mars and capricorn comes next saturn's there in capricorn pluto's there in capricorn we're going to have a major malefic activation of capricorn energy although saturn loves capricorn pluto and eh, it's kind of eh, it's okay it's not its favorite but it tolerates capricorn and then mars is actually wonderful in capricorn it can be a bit destructive but productivity like people um People who are like the most successful in their field tend to have Mars in Capricorn. It's one. It's a major success type of placement. So we need to um, be building purpose within ourselves and finding something that, you know, shows us who we are and shows us what we want within our like solar plexus um, chakra, so that we can then want to go in and be productive during Mars in Capricorn. Because the only thing that makes Mars and Capricorn not so great is when you're having to do a lot of legwork, having to be very productive, but not enjoying what you're doing. Like, it's it makes, like, this false sense of um, authority and also this false sense of, uh, I just want to say productivity again. The secret is to find what you enjoy being productive with during this time. And also, I think, calibrating that. Like, how can you do more for less? How can you accomplish more in less amount of time? How can you really um, polish up your system of export, of um, output, basically? A great time to like buy new technology or to buy something that makes you more productive, especially once we get into Mars and Capricorn. Some of us have already done that here and now, um, preparing. Like if you kind of live ahead of the um, the scene as I do a bit, you might already be feeling that coming. So you're like, okay, I need to like um, invest a little bit in my productivity. Great to do that here as long as you don't like lose the theme of your aspiration. Another thing that can happen with Mars and Sagittarius is like a sudden... Um, like heart experiences, sudden uh, fiery, like uh, love affairs can happen or um, passionate flings of like that only last like a week, but become like Titanic type of experiences can be formed here. So make sure that you know who to trust. Um, most of the time, I'm going to say like 99% of the time people are trustable just because it's like good natured people. But if this were hitting your chart in a weird way, like, um, a Mars Pluto connection. Um, there are probably a lot of you who have Pluto and Sag listening. Um, so watch out for that time when Mars conjuncts your Pluto. Watch out for um, like harsh Mars moon connections, although that's not going to last very long because Mars isn't retrograding here. I also think one of the most important things um, for this transit is to embrace opportunities because again, Saturn and Sag dealt a lot with having opportunities, like lots of them, but almost feeling trapped by so many opportunities. There were a lot of people who um, had a lot of doors open and out of not being able to choose which door to enter, it's like you just kind of stand and crouch and shudder at the many entrances, you know, and you just kind of stagnate. It's really important to go through a door in um, January, February, in the beginning of March here, um, choose a door, go through it. They all lead back to the same place. I'll remember that, um, depending on what you've generated as you enter. Um, and that's sort of the, uh, catch of it all. It's like, 
okay, I'm not liking what I'm generating here and now. I need to not enter the door so that I don't um, capitalize on what I have working um, at the interior level right now. So um, work on that during Mars and Sagittarius. Work on what's generating itself from the inside out because that is almost like um, fire and gasoline with this transit. Like what's being generated sort of gets the match lit to it and the explosion can happen, you know. Um, so fame can come, um, long-awaited closures can come, new flings which take you like around the world can come. Um, just very unexpected things. It's a very, um, it's a very, like I said, bright and like firework type of transit, like very, um, multiple, it's very, very like multicolored and, um, explosive and flamboyant and, um, memorable because it's preparing to settle down and become more meek once it goes into Capricorn. And, and as I was saying, Mars is exalted in Capricorn. It's a wonderful place for Mars, but, um, it's not the most bright or flamboyant experience, although it creates that, but it's the process of creating that. So we're just kind of going in and out of this creative cycle, in and out of this um, uh, creative meshing experience. So, you know, basically to um, culminate on this, it's important to find progress somewhere. It's important to give yourself what you couldn't have in 2017. And at the same time, be responsible with the way that you're spending that energy. And um, it's important to also like work with your health. That's like another thing that came up too. That's been coming out of me for like the entire time that I've had my channel. Like I'm very, I, I personally am very um, interested in the connection between energy, health, and how like we can consciously sort of um, filter that through and work with that. It feels like um, like sleep cycles can become more organized, more put together. It feels like exercise regimens are going to be really important. This is a transit where you can gain weight if you don't allow yourself to um, sweat and move your body. It's really important to get the energy moving because it's so much energy, like within the solar plexus, that you have to be able to um, circulate it through the body. Otherwise, it can become like very hungry and you can your appetite can increase a lot during this transit and you can need like more carbs, more calories to um, keep your brain going as well. So really try to keep the body moving. And that will also um, detract from the accident type of indication that this can be. Um, Mars and Sag is a little bit uh, clumsy and a little bit, um, again, the brain is using so much energy that the coordination can be a bit deprived. So it's very easy to like fall down the stairs or um, uh, have like a fender bender or something. So as long as you're keeping your body moving and as long as you're not like being repressing or like repressing any of your insights or emotions, then you should be like hyper coordinated and very aware. But it's like usually one of the other with like Mars and Sag, like you're either very coordinated, very on or like just all over the place. And it can cause like vertigo or dizziness as well. Um, and a little bit of anxiety if, if keyword, if you cannot allow yourself a certain aspiration or not allow yourself a certain potential or purpose, Sagittarius can be a bit domineering in this way because it rules purpose, aspiration, and like desires and how we can accomplish that, how we can come into that headspace to accomplish that. So if we're ever in that place where we're like denying ourselves that, the energy just implodes on itself and comes out in like quite negative ways. Um, so keep that in mind. And if you are feeling anxious or feeling a little bit like dizzy or overcome with things like what have you not allowed yourself to consider? What aspirations or goals have you sort of said? No, that's not possible for me. I don't have the money for that. I don't have the potential for that. I'm not good enough to do that. Um, that type of thing Sagittarius energy gets very upset at. And that in and of itself is, I feel, the reason why Saturn and Sag was so difficult because Saturn benefits off of what we limit ourselves from because that is needed sometimes it's needed to limit things like obviously um um we have to like limit how much sugar we eat otherwise our teeth will fall out or we have to um limit how much we spend or else we will be homeless you know so it's important to limit sometimes but when mars is in like sagittarius this is a time to like um gain and um and allow versus limit so uh, yeah find to wrap that up what you limited yourself from 2017 give that to yourself now if you can or in a new creative way that's a big one if you if it's like something that you can't actually give to yourself like if you had like death of a loved one or something and you didn't get to make closure with them um and that's like your regret or something and now you can't have that give it to yourself in a new way how can you um 
respect yourself enough to give yourself what that person wanted for you in a certain way. Um, if that makes sense, get creative with this energy because some some of us from 2017, like it can't possibly quite come through in the exact same way, but there has to be like a tied connection that um, gives the same type of reaction. And that's just where you have to get creative. That's where you have to embrace this creative energy um, and just shine and thrive. And, and for every, everyone can, especially us mutable signs, um, can shine and thrive through this Mars and Sagittarius transit. Um, really focus on your creative output. Where do you want to see yourself over 2018? Where do you want to see yourself over 2019? It's a good time to even think about that and over the Jupiter and Sagittarius transit in general. You can get a nice insight into what it is that you want to do. Start planning dates, start planning events, um, content distribution, um, and so on and so forth. Anyway, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed this sort of background ramble about Mars and Sagittarius. I just wanted to come on because it was channeling through me. I hope that something good came through it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would so appreciate that. Comment below what your experience of this energy has been so far. Um, if you haven't seen, I am on Patreon where you can help support the cause. I will be having a lot of new launches going on there. So I would so appreciate it if you would follow the page at least or become a patron. That would be fun too. Um, and what else? I'm still available for a bit of one-on-one -on -one consultation right now too. You can email me. Um, there should also be a link for my tarot readings too in the description box. And also if you haven't seen February readings, that will be on the playlist in the screen too. So anyway, everyone, I've so enjoyed being here and I will talk to you soon. Bye.